Well, hello, it's your pal Al here once again on Al's Geek Lab. Today, I'm going to be talking about this little thing on this quick video. This is called the Wi Fi Modem 232, or in this case, this one is called the Y Modem 232. All it does is connect to a serial port on your old retro PC, or Amiga, or Commodore, or whatever, and gives you a wireless access. This little thing's the wireless antenna. Let's see what we can do with this. All right, so I have here my trusty PCXT just down here, and I'm gonna use that as the basis for my tests today. But the good thing is about this device is as long as it's got a 25 pin serial connector on your computer, or well, I guess another computer with a nine pin or some other kind of RS-232, you can use a, uh, gender converter or something like that to put it into DB25, which this is. So this is a normal RS-232 device. It's got an LCD type display here. Uh, it's got the power in here, which is 5 volts, and it's a USB connector. And uh, this here is the wireless receiver transmitter. This is the aerial or the antenna. Okay, so this is my USB cable. It's just plugged into a normal uh, USB charger. The uh, manual, you have to um, download it. It's um, so I got this in the post. It says, thank you for your purchase. Go to the link and uh, look at that. So this product ships with a default baud of 300 baud. 300 baud is about the same uh, speed as that you can read characters coming up on a screen. It's pretty slow. So um, you will need to change it afterwards unless you want to live life in the slow lane, which might be fine for some people who really want the retro experience. So I downloaded the manual uh, on my printer, which has decided not to work very well. There's this magenta going down the side of all the pages, which is awesome. So I'll just have a quick look through there and uh, see what we can see. What we can see. Okay, so it says uh, how to use it. This one here emulates the standard Haze compatible modem, all of the standard and most of the extended AT commands are fully emulated. Okay, so I guess what I'm gonna do now on this little XT here is plug this into the back, have a look at what it does, and then run this terminal program. Just as a test to make sure the device actually works before I go ahead and plug it into anything, I'm just gonna plug it into the five volts and see what happens. Oh, that's lovely. Look at that nice little display picture looking for the router, it says. So it's not gonna find one because I haven't configured anything. As you can probably see here, I had to use a uh, converter to move it from DB9, which is on the serial port on this PC, to DB25. So yeah, it's a bit ugly, it kind of kicks out the back there. Now, I've decided to use a program called Procom for this. However, there are uh, plenty of other comms programs out there, and this was just the one that was lying on my hard drive here. So by no means uh, should this be considered the best program to use. In fact, it's probably one of the worst programs to use if you're using a, uh, a BBS, if you want to connect to a BBS or something like that. Uh, it probably doesn't support ANSI more properly, but I just wanted to get this thing set up. So let's launch Procom. Okay, Alt F10 for help, here we go. And we want to set the modem parameters, so to make sure it's at 300 BPS, which is what it said. So currently it's set to 24N81, which means no parity, eight stop bits, uh, eight data bits, one stop bit, and it's on COM1. So we're gonna do that, and we're going to set it to 300 baud. So I'll set it to number seven, which is 300 baud, uh, no parity, eight data bits, and one stop bit. Changes the disk. All right, so we're just left with a blanking cursor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this thing in and hope for the best. Looking for router. There we go. So it's probably not going to find very much. File system ready. So that's 300 baud there, it's pretty, pretty slow. But there you go, ATI, and it shows you Y modem 232. There are three methods at which you can make the configuration. One, you can press the WPS button on your router. Two, manually enter the SSID. 
that's the router's name and its passphrase, or three, use a network scan to select the network number and add a passphrase if necessary. So I think I'm going to do the latter. I don't actually have the WPS button on my router, so I'm just going to use AT star N. Let's see what happens. Scanning available networks. Here we go. That's me there, number zero, Wi-Fi. Uh, so I'll just enter the AT star NS1, then my passphrase, which is super secure, and then hit return. I think I messed that one up, NS0. That's better. Excellent, now I'm connected to my router, or router as you say in America. So the status LED on the Wi-Fi 2 or the Y232 is now yellow, which is good. That's the sign of it working. So what I can do is I can test the device now by trying to connect to a website. So in this case, we're going to go to google.com on the insecure port of port 80. So that basically means that it's worked. And I can use ATH0 to hang up there. So that's how easy it is to actually get going with it. It's pretty, pretty easy. So now that I've tested it, I really do want to set the baud rate to something a bit higher. Now, um, the baud rates that it suits uh, go all the way from 300, as you've seen, is pretty slow, all the way up to 230400, which is um, much faster than um, the, the baud rates that I've ever been used to. So 230400 is probably faster than the serial port on this particular PC can handle because it's pretty old. Um, controller, the uh, I think the I/O controller in this is probably sort of from the early to mid 90s. It's a little bit upgraded for the one that's in the stock PC. If you've got a stock PC XT around this sort of vintage, which is about 1984, I think, uh, then the maximum baud rate your your uh, controller, the stock controller, probably suits is about 9600. Might support up to 19200, but very unlikely that it'll, it'll go faster than that. This one, I think, will handle 56K or maybe even higher, but I'm going to try it on. Um, I'm going to try it on 56K first, just to just to be uh, renegade. <laughs> so here we go. So I can set the board with AT star, and then um, B, which is for board, I'm assuming, and then I'm going to set it for 57600, which is 56K. So I've set it there, and now I guess I need to reprogram my terminal to tell it that it needs to go at this new rate, 57600. So I will check that by doing Alt-P again. And yeah, <laughs> it doesn't look like this This Procoms program even supports a rate of above um, uh, 19,200. So I'm gonna uh, go back quickly and, and I'll try Telex. So it says 19208N1. We wanted it to do 57600, that's right. Okay, let's do that. And let's save those choices. ATI. There we go. Perfect. All right, we're back in business. <laughs> right, okay, so that works. So let's just try and connect to a BBS. Awesome. So you can see there's a bit of corruption there um, on the display. That might be for one of two reasons. One, the uh, information that's coming through on the connection is too fast for the device to handle, or it might be because um, the, uh, the, the ANSI graphics in this isn't quite set up properly. All right, so I'm going to set the baud rate slightly less now. 
So ATB, let's go for 38400. So slightly slower. And now I just got to set the comms program. Yeah, that's coming down a lot easier now on the eyes. Certainly doesn't look too bad. There you go. There's a little corruption there. So this is this is a, probably a good example of why it's so important to get a terminal that properly supports what you're doing. Now I'm going to just quickly try again to um, slow this down and we'll see where we get to. So I've changed the baud rate down from 38,400 now down to 19,200, which is pretty much 50, uh, sorry, 14.4K. Um, what I've also done is changed the, um, the terminal client to one that I used back in the day. Um, this one's from 1997, so it's quite a, quite a new terminal compared to all the other ones. Uh, what I've done is I've changed it to um, 19200, as, as I say, also. But if you look um, here, I don't know if you can make this out, but it says the device is an 8250A or a 16450. That's the type of controller that the comms card has. And I thought the comms card was maybe a little bit newer than that and provided an 16550A uh, type controller, which is um, a lot better. It has a sort of hardware buffer and allows faster speeds of up to sort of 56K or even higher. So this has got an old controller. So if you find that um, your, uh, your comms card has an older controller in it, then probably don't recommend setting speeds of 19200. And I found this just um, by using this particular terminal program, which as I say is Terminate, and this is version five. This is now at 9600 BPS. So I've taken it right down. Let's have a look at this. Still a little bit of corruption there. So as you can see, it's pretty usable. This is the agency BBS here in good old New Zealand. So in summary, it's not fast at 4800 BPS, which is what I've got it set up as here, but it certainly does the trick. And I'm pretty sure if I had a faster IO card, then this would be an awful lot better. But as it is, it's still perfectly usable. I do enjoy using it. It absolutely works. And the great thing is, it's actually pretty easy to get set up with. There you go, the Wi-Fi 232 uh, wireless serial modem. It emulates a standard old dial-up modem, but uses the power of the modern day Wi-Fi network to get you on the old systems, and in some cases, new systems as well. Well, that's it for this episode of Al's Geek Lab. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then please give me the old thumbs up. And of course, I really do appreciate it when you subscribe to the channel. So if you like what you're hearing and seeing, then please do click that subscribe button. I'll see you again real soon here on Al's Geek Lab. Thanks for watching.